In this week's episode of Working with Todoist, we're going back to basics with filters. Hello, I'm Carl Pauline and in this episode I'm going to show you the basics of using filters in Todoist. Now filters is really one of those features that makes Todoist sing because filters gives you the ability to filter out the noise of all the tasks that are coming into your today view. Now, without filters, you can end up with 20 or 30 tasks that you need to complete on any particular day. Now, that, if you're using a very large screen desktop computer, actually isn't really a problem. But for most of us, we are using our tasks or we're viewing our tasks from our mobile devices. Now, mobile devices, by their very nature, have a much smaller screen. So 20 to 30 tasks on a mobile device looks huge and that can generate that feeling of overwhelm which is what being productive is all about removing completely. So in Todoist we have this wonderful feature and I should point out this feature is a paid feature but hey for $28 a year less than $30 a year what Todoist can do for you, it is well worth the price. Anyway, what I use filters for is so that I can look at my today task list without the things that I cannot do anything at the moment. Now, for those of you who are following this series from episode one or part one, part two, and now part three, I hopefully you did your homework from last week. So if you haven't watched episode two on labels, please go back and have a look at that because what I really need you to do is to have your labels set up for this so that you can get the full power of filters in your Todoist system. Okay, so let's go into this. But before I do, I just want to ask you guys, if you really like this video, please click on the like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please, help me out and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I really would like you to join our community so that we can help you guys to become even more productive so that you can get all the really important things done in your life. Okay, let's go into Todoist and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, before we get into this, I want to clear up a bit of confusion that occurred in episode one when I dealt with projects. Now, what I did was I showed you the areas of focus and goals, but as I'm using my demo account for this recording and for the previous recordings, so I can show you in a much more simplified way, uh, I realized that my areas of focus and goals almost duplicated each other, which actually caused a bit of confusion. So I've cleaned that up now and I'll show you what I mean by areas of focus projects. So in the areas of focus project, you want to be putting in things like family, job related stuff <clears throat> and when I talk about job I mean advancing yourself in terms of your job so maybe things that occurred in your annual employee review uh, that you needed to focus on well you would put that in your areas of focus maybe you write a blog so it's something that doesn't have an end date so you would put your blog details in the areas of focus in my case, I've got a YouTube channel, of course, so my YouTube channel would also be in areas of focus. It doesn't have an end date. And also in areas of focus, you can put in things like your hobbies. So in my case, I love uh, good quality shoes and boots, and I like cleaning them. If you've seen the, pre the episode, I showed you my shoes. Um, well, in my shoes, I have a, a date when I should be cleaning and polishing my shoes so that I maintain the quality of the leather. So all those things go into areas of focus. In goals, this is where you should have things that are focused on your career advancement, your goals for your career advancement. 
and also things like your fitness program if your your goal is to lose a certain amount of weight and you're going to do that through fitness and that would be in your fitness and of course education which would be self-development so those are the things i just wanted to clear that up because it was a question that came up on my youtube channel so just a reminder areas of focus are things that don't have an end date and not necessarily related to your goals so in here i've got family job my blog youtube channel and my hobby which would be shoes and goals are things that you are trying to achieve. And I just wanted to clear that up before we moved into filters. So I do apologize for any confusion that I may have caused there. I do apologize for that. Okay, let's go into filters. Now, I'm gonna start with the basic filters. We'll come to advancement tasks in a moment, but I reason there is a reason why that's at the top. So I've put in a number of uh, filters here that can really help you during the day. So the first filter I'm going to show you is my work today filter. Now basically this is all work related tasks that are overdue or due today. And I'm going to show you the, the code for that one. So I'm going to edit for filter. So we've got overdue and today in brackets. That means any task that is overdue or today. And then we use the ampersand for and. Don't type in and. That doesn't work. You need to put in the ampersand. And then you use the two hashtags for work. Now, what that does is the two hashtags means that the whole project. So if you look here, I've got work. So I've got these ones up at the top here, which is related to my Google calendar, uh, sample projects and so on. So these tasks here, all of them uh, are included. If I didn't use the double ampersand, I would only get the tasks that are in the work part so in here i've got eight which is these top ones up here and they're all related to the google calendar from the demo i did on google calendar so make sure when you create the filter you want to create the filter with the two hashtags so that you get the the complete work project uh, view so that's just something that you need to keep an eye on there so if i click on work today so the only two tasks that i have in work for today is to redesign the company name cards and to call bob about using his garage those are the only two that come up now let's move into the home one the home is exactly the same uh, except i've changed the home project so we've got overdue and the vertical line and today in brackets uh, so that vertical line means or and then we've got and and then we've got the hashtag hashtag and then home and that's going to give you only all the projects all of the projects that are related so as you can see here the two projects are in my home folder lawn mower repairs and the 2017 annual summer holiday so those come up in that particular tag now those two are really really important now one more before i move into more specialized ones is the no due date now the no due date is a really really useful filter particularly for when you're doing your weekly review because if you haven't put a due date on a task it can very easily get lost in amongst the hundreds of other tasks that you actually have so when you do your week review, it's worthwhile just clicking on this filter, no due date, and just checking to see, as you can see, I've got a lot in here that don't have a due date. And it just gives me a, to go through them and just check that there isn't any red flags in there that I need to be aware of. So there's a really good one. Now, let's move on to the AM and PM tasks here. So I'm sorry this isn't actually in any particular logical order, but you'll understand. Now, the AM and PM tasks, this goes back to when I spoke about in the introduction. Quite often, most of us are looking at our to-do list from our mobile devices. And as I mentioned, the screen size on mobile devices is much smaller than you get on these computers. So what you want to do is you're looking at looking only looking at the tasks that you can do at this moment in time. Now I use the flag system for AM tasks. So for example, if we just go into here and I'll show you, we've got the white flag, the yellow flag, the orange flag and the red flag. So let me show you how I use this. The red flag is for tasks that absolutely must be done today. These are my priority tasks. I would not normally have more than three red flagged tasks on any particular day because i just know that the day could get blown up at any point 
The orange flag is allocated to all tasks that I want to do and can only do in the morning. So I apply the yellow, the orange flag for that, the priority two, and the code for that would be P2. The yellow flags are for the afternoon, tasks that I need to complete in the afternoon or I want to complete in the afternoon. And the remaining ones, which is called priority four, but basically it doesn't have any flag, that one are for my evening tasks. So this is how I can then use, make good use of my AM tasks. So basically the code that I'm using for AM is overdue in today, of course, and the ampersand for and P1, P1 means priority one, uh, and that would be, actually I should have put P1 and P2. So um, P1, what I'm gonna do is you have to put this in brackets, so P1, and then you use the vertical sign and P2, and then close the bracket, and that's how you would get. So I've got here, the second one comes up, take wife out for dinner. So my P1 and P2 tasks, come up in that one. Now, PM, which is going to show the same because I realized when I was setting this up, I've got it wrong. So we're going to put in the uh, sun and then P3 and then save that. And that's going to bring up any tasks that I've got set up for the afternoon. So let's just go, let's just change. Actually, let's go into the projects. I'll pick up anything here. Let's call this uh, P3, uh, P3 and today. So that's in. Now let's go back to the filter and you'll see that the PM task, that has now come in. Now I haven't got an, a filter for the evening simply because hopefully any task remaining in the evening needs to be dealt with. So I don't actually need a filter for the evening tasks. But what this does using the AM and PM filters, it means that in the morning when I look at my to is from my mobile device or indeed from my laptop, all, all I need to do is go to filters, click on the AM task, and I will see all the tasks that can be completed in the morning. I do not see the afternoon tasks, and I do not see the evening tasks, simply because it's the morning, and I don't want to see them anyway. I'm not going to deal with them at that time. Okay, let's move on to my routines today. Now, routines today is a wonderful uh, task, simply because... This allows me to see what routines I've got set up for the day. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't use this very often because I don't like to be focused in on routines, but it's a handy filter to have so I can just see what routines I've set up for today and what I can push off to another day. Simply all I've done there is with that one is overdue in today and, and this time because I'm only focused in one project, which is my routines. Actually that, because I've got routines set up, I need to put that as a double uh, hashtag, so I'll click change that. And today I've got in here in my routines, it's a daily routine, do the washing up. But that's gonna come up. By the way, you can click off things, no problem from your routine. So that's just a handy one to see what tasks that you want to do. Uh, that are routines that are not important. Remember, your routine tasks are things that are not taking your life further forward and they just have to be done. Right, the final filter I want to show you and the one that gives me so much power every day. This is the one that I'm using more than anything else. This one is all the tasks that I have to complete today that are not related to routines. These six tasks that I've got in here are tasks that are going to take my life further forward. They're going to improve my life. They're going to take my business forward. Anything that's not a routine. So these are going to take a project forward. They'll take my life forward. They will include my goals. Basically, they include everything that I've got due or overdue today that are not routines. And the filter for that is very, actually quite, it's a little bit more complex. We've got overdue and today, and, and then we use the exclamation mark and the double, I'm going to have to do the double, we'll do the double, oops, we'll do the double for that uh, routines. So that should give me all the essays. Uh, so what we've got here is anything in my routines folder, um, because I've got the exclamation mark, exclamation mark means not including. So overdue in today and my exclamation mark routine, and then that is basically how I use the advancement task. Now, there is one more that I should explain about the advancement task. If you want to go that little bit further, I'll take you into my Todoist 
Um, I've got advancement one. Now, basically, this is advancement for the next three days. It just helps me to plan things a little bit better. So in here, if we look at that, I've got three days and not routines. So three days and not routines. That's simply because I find that one very useful. So let's go back into the Todoist here. Uh, so if you wanted to do, uh, call this advancement, uh, advancement, uh, plus five so let's say for the next five days um, so what you would do there is five days and and then not and then you're going to put the double uh, hashtag and routines and that would be your filter so in here now advancement five I've got all the tasks that are due for the next five days that are not routine and that would really help me to focus in over the next five days. If you want to do this for three days, you can just put three days and not routines. It's entirely up to you. Mine is three days. It's just because I like to know what's going on over the next three days. But you could change that quite simply to three days. And sure enough, you'd have it for three days. Okay. Apologies for this being a long episode, but I really wanted to get you into filters because they are so powerful. These ones to me are the most basic ones that you can use. The advancement task is my, the one I use all the time because I really want to be focused in on those project tasks and not focused in on my routines so that I can move my life forward every single day. Hopefully you found this very useful. If you have any questions at all about filters, please feel free to contact me at any time. What I should also do is point you in the direction of Todoist filters because this gives you a full rundown of all the filters that Todoist does. I'll put a link to this in the comment, uh, note section below so that you have full ideas. So you've got access to that and you can play around with it and create your own filters. They are so powerful. I strongly recommend that you have a look at it. Okay, thank you very much for watching this episode of Back to Basics with Todoist and I hopefully will see you in the next episode where we're going to look more in detail of the tasks and how to set up your tasks but it only just remains for me to tell you now or to wish you now a very, very productive week and I will see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.